Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, fans and followers. This is Westbound for Westbound Music. This is my second part of the product demonstration for Orchestral Essentials. This time the package number two. There is uh, Orchestral Essentials 1 and 2, both in an updated version. I already did a demo on Orchestral Essentials 1. I'm going to link in the description below. Uh, and now I couldn't help but get the other package as well, mostly because of the articulations. I watched a couple of other product demos and uh, the articulations are really second to none in my opinion for that kind of money. You would have to start digging holes in your wallet with other manufacturers. So I thought it merited a second look. First of all, thanks to my subscribers, to the new ones and the returning visitors. Thanks for your support. I can see that what started out as an experiment uh, is well received. I see an increase in watch time hours overall, l longer stays on my videos. But before I babble too much and lose you, <laughs> let's get right to it and take a look at Orchestral Essentials 2. So now we should see, uh, we see the project uh, and the interface. This is Orchestral Essentials 2. You see it, you can uh, uh, differentiate it by the yellowish amber um, look and feel of the type face here. And like I said, uh, it's a complementary set of orchestral instruments. Uh, it's not the same. It's, uh, well, some of it is reminiscent of, of the other package. It's equally powerful in terms of if you only have one, you get to do a lot with it. However, I thought that, you know, particularly the solo instruments or solo sections, I should say, because most of the time it's flutes and uh, woodwinds together, like oboe and clarinet and stuff like that. But you get to, uh, you know, create your own single uh, settings and we're going to get into that. So what we're looking at right now is um, the flute, but let's just listen to a couple of presets first. And also, like I mentioned in my other demo, I'm using Orchestral Essentials here uh, through complete control and it supports NKS, which is a standard um, introduced by Native Instruments um, to make sure that you get to take full advantage of one of their S-type keyboards. This one here is the S88 version 1. There's another updated version with a larger display and stuff. But the, the important part is that the controls that you see here on the keyboard are mapped to functions in the software and all other manufacturers who support that standard um, you know you get to make use of those outboard controls in the plugin that you're using and orchestral essentials i'm happy to say supports nks so we're going to look at that uh, as well as as far as for example key switches are concerned and how to manipulate the sounds from the keyboard here instead of within the software. Let's listen to a few of the presets here. Single instruments, box organ, cartoon ensemble, ensemble. The choir, we're gonna probably take another look later on. This is really, there is another choir in Orchestral Essentials 1. I'm gonna say OE1 and OE2 from here on because it's shorter. Uh, but this one here has a few advantages or at least one advantage over the other one. It's more, it's more epic, I think. French horns, straightforward. Flutes and piccolo. The full orchestra. Similar to the version of the other one, but slightly different from the sound. Flageolet, horns and trombones. So all the sections that you would want, and here are the solo instruments. The multis are a selection of um, instruments or instrument sections and combined in the mixer down below here. We're gonna take a look at that in the end. So...
Okay, we're not going to listen to all of the presets. Uh, it's it's part of the other demo already. Just to give you an idea how convenient it is for this example to step through the presets and get an audio preview of what's going to load before you load it. You know, depending on your machine, some of the multis might take a minute, uh, I mean a second, a few seconds to load. So you get to listen to what you get before you actually lo load it onto the track. I think that's great. And um, similar concept or same concept as an OE1. You have uh, single sections or even single instruments, solo instruments, as well as multis. Multis are you know, a combination of uh, sections loaded into the mixer section here, which is 10 slots. But uh, given the power and uh, expressiveness of the presets, you're not gonna run out of slots uh, anytime soon. And this is only for one track, mind you, only for one channel strip. I'm working Logic, channel strip, um, uh, tracks, whatever uh, vernacular you're familiar with. Okay, so now, um, since I've already loaded the flute, which is one of the legato instruments, by the way, uh, to load an instrument, either you select it and double click it from uh, from the list here to the left, or you go to library, this is a menu, opens up, and you see there's instruments and multis. The multis are what we just heard here. You get to pre-listen to them as well by clicking on the little speaker icon. Amazing. You don't even have to play anymore, <laughs> just load the presets. No, it's not that straightforward. So uh, this is uh, the menu to select your multis or single instrument sections. And the ones with uh, that little icon here, like LEG, and uh, you know, uh, the one that ties notes together, um, that denotes um, the legato instruments. And so let's listen to the flute here, which I loaded. If you listen closely, when I s change notes and switch between keys, uh, y you should have been able to hear that um, there is not a new tonguing, which is the usual to start a new tone for a, for a flautist, but it's actually legal, meaning to say that they bend the notes in one breath for wind instruments, for example. And uh, for the string instruments, it would be like in one bow movement, uh, you switch the notes instead of starting with the bow again. This is what legato is basically about. And I thought that, you know, um, they sound incredibly authentic and plausible. Let's try another instrument. Let's take the bow, uh, oboe, for example. Oh, before I go on, um, this is Orchestral Essentials. So I loaded a couple of other um, instruments. This is, by the way, uh, for example, this is a fl flute from BBC SO Discover, the free version. So it has a little bit of legato built into it too. To hear the difference, here's the stock version of a flute from Logic. And I think you can hear that, you know, with every note that I start to play, there is new tonguing. It's it's not this um, soft transition from one note to the other. And this is what this basically is about. So just to give you a comparison of how how realistic they actually sound. Let's load another instrument. The oboe, for example, has legato or clarinet and bassoons is also very good. By the way, they are, these are all or most of them are uh, pre-mapped to the mod wheel for expression, so we can make use of that. Oh, I'm in the wrong register, of course. <laughs> And uh, this is another uh, advantage of uh, NKS. You see the register highlighted here. If you, I know that this uh, kind of display here is not ideal with uh, multi-blended displays, but I 
have to help myself with what I have. <laughs> uh, so if you look down below, let's just switch this off for a second. You can see here that these are the ember ones are illuminated, meaning to say that this is the register that this instrument plays in. The ones that are actually active are going to be illuminated. If I compare that with what I had before, the flute, for example, you can see it switches all the way above. Let's try something else, the oboe, as I tried before, as I said before, it's in the same register. incredibly realistic don't you think you know the, the slight vibrato or tremolo whatever expression you prefer and really really lyrical and expressive and also the round robins uh, which is um, a sampling technique whereby you sample each note uh, several times in different versions so that every time you hit the same note it doesn't actually trigger the same sample which makes again for a much more realistic uh, version of the instrument getting much closer to how an instrumentalist actually performs on the instrument instead of having it sound too robotic which was a problem with early versions of sampling you know you we didn't have uh the amount of ram and memory that we have today or it was too expensive and so the manufacturers the developers had to accommodate uh the data into small pockets of memory and then sometimes especially with drums for example it sounded very robotic because you you just didn't have the capacity and the technology to support all this expressiveness so today we do luckily and it's affordable for everyone especially in this package and this is why i meant to highlight this particular feature okay what else we got here oh well, yeah articulations uh and that's also a very good one yeah So there are different articulations, different from OE1. This here has the flageolet um, for the strings, but it's a, a playing technique which you rarely ever get in one of the entry packages because it's really, you know, to sample it uh, uh, authentically and, and plausibly takes a little bit of effort and... This is interesting too. These are two eighth notes. And they are tempo synced, so apparently now we're at a slow tempo in my project here. But the higher you go in tempo, the quicker these notes play. Or the 16th notes. So I'm hitting the key only one time. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, here we go. Okay, this is, <laughs> this is what I just demoed. Amazing. So these are typical staccato, but also this uh, rhythmic expression. Without an arpeggiator, uh, mind you. This is actually sampled, so you still get to use an arpeggiator if you need it to, or just record it, play it in. Okay, so key switches is what I wanted to show you. And now we really have to watch both screens at the same time. Right now the key switch is set to C minus one, which we don't see showing up anywhere here. What you can do is you click the mouse, you hold the mouse, and then just drag it all the way up to down. And now you see this red thing here move up on the keyboard, and we want to have it close to how many do we need? Five. Okay. We want to have it close to our register in which we play. So C, what is it? C2. Switch over to the next articulation. Do the same thing, hold the mouse, you know, move it up, C sharp 2, and so on. Ain't this great? <laughs> I think this is really convenient. And I don't know this from, from any other solution, but those that support the NKS standard. Or maybe I just found out <laughs> it's also possible. <laughs> okay, last one. All right. So now... If I press any of these red keys here, we get to switch the articulation. See in the 
interface above here. As I switch the keys, it changes articulation. You get to store this by clicking here this little triangle icon, then saying save, and then it you could give it a new you know attribute a new name to it. I just leave it as it is and oh okay, I already did that before. It doesn't matter. Let's save it again. And um next time um that I load it into uh, the software it's still set to the predefined ones but I can always select it from my user section here let's say open it should default to the folder with the user content you click on orchestral essentials 2 string section there we are violence section click it and it loads with those key switches that we just selected see and it's basically it okay um the multis <laughs>
they are aware of it they're gonna address it and their support i must say was really super responsive within hours that responded that they got my, got my message and then someone came actually back to me and we had a little exchange about that and said yeah they are aware and they're they're gonna fix it but really don't that let this deter you i mean this this package both oe1 and oe2 are so rich in good sounding really meticulously sampled instruments i mean i've, I've taken a listen to to some libraries before project sim really for now f as far as i'm concerned raise the bar in terms of entry packages and what they can do especially with those articulations and and with the piano this is like uh, you open the lid and reach into uh, you know into the string section on the piano and dampen the strings which you sometimes saw Jacob Collier do in his performances or uh, Tori Amos or other um, famous artists I've never heard that in in any of the other packages that that I got to listen to so far okay I think I've babbled enough for now you want to go and play with this and trust me uh, this is really I keep saying your Swiss pocket army knife um, as far as, as um, orchestral sketching and scoring is concerned I mean you really get far and and, and with a little effort just by using the presets and not even needing to tweak them you get to have ex incredibly uh, expressive sounding you know orchestrations all right so this is Orchestra Essentials 2. Uh, if you want to hear more sounds, I suggest you just get it. Okay, this is Westbound Force by Music Orchestra Essentials 2.0. Hope you like this and come back. See you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>